Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Brent Willis from Voyager Pharmaceuticals. Where do we start? You just had Dr. Mueller join as your chief chemist for Voyager. Let's start with the significance of this, please. Well, Dr. Mueller is a uh, he's, he's very renowned uh, uh, chemist. Uh, he's got uh, over 40 patents behind him. Um, and he's an expert with uh, mineral brine uh, extraction of minerals from mineral brine water. And uh, he has a patent that uh, we just acquired from him. And, uh, and we're very fortunate that he's joined our team and uh, we're gonna be advancing with him uh, to uh, create uh, a new iodine extraction process that we believe is gonna be uh, uh, very disruptive in the market. So in addition to, of course, becoming your director of chemistry, Dr. Brian Mueller is also made a deal with you on his Mueller process. Now, is this going to be exclusive to Voyager Pharmaceuticals? Yeah, 100% exclusive. We own, we we were assigned the uh, the rights for the IP. So we now own it 100%. So we're in control of that IP. So uh, we're going to use that to uh, uh, look at uh, producing iodine flake. Uh, iodine flake market is uh, uh, the multinationals in the iodine drug business are the largest consumers of iodine flake. So we have the opportunity to produce iodine flake, uh, sell it to a multinational for a long-term deal to create uh, an excellent revenue stream for Voyager. And, uh, and more importantly, that first step of the Mueller process really enhances what we're calling our streamlined uh, drug manufacturing process. So we're going to be able to uh, eliminate the cost of making flake with this process and we're going to be able to manufacture iodine drugs at a much lower cost, which is going to be uh, very significant for us moving forward. And of course, the significance of this deal is the Mueller process. Can you tell us about, you know, for instance, the process really targets uh, brine water, for instance, and not everybody really understands that. Can you tell us what that means? Yeah, so iodine is found in oil field uh, uh, deposits that were uh, created through uh, marine environments. And uh, the Anadarko Basin has high levels of iodine. And uh, effectively, what we'll be doing is uh, extracting, uh, is having water from the oil companies. Uh, we will uh, have that shipped to us and we will uh, extract the iodine directly from the brine water. And we will return a pure salt water which is important for re-injecting. Uh, we remove all the oil and the gas and all the uh, organics. So we have a clean uh, uh, water that gets returned, which is uh, very beneficial to the uh, disposal uh, companies, uh, reducing things like earthquakes and stuff like that that are ongoing uh, with all this, uh, uh, the issues down there. Um, so, our process effectively takes iodine out and we create, we can create a flake or we can uh, keep it in solution and go directly into manufacturing drugs. So we have, we have two options of, of generating our revenue. Uh, number one focus is, is creating iodine drugs directly from the brine water. So we will have a, a, a site where we have processing iodine water and we're, we're extracting iodine and we're making iodine drugs and being the only iodine drug manufacturer in the United States and in a market that's uh, effectively almost $2 billion a year. So it gives us a huge advantage, supply chain security and low cost. And of course, one of the significant elements in this particular news release is that the Mueller process is actually quite scalable. Is that correct? Yeah, we believe we can uh, scale it up very easily just based on how the process works. Um, I think what you can envision is, uh, you know, this will be a containerized units that we uh, deploy. And uh, it's it's a very, it's, it's, it's fairly simple on how it works. And uh, it, so we can, our goal is to uh, longer term to be producing a thousand tons a year of iodine flake. And uh, and also producing our own drugs, uh, 
you know, I believe that this technology is a piece that's going to help us get to our goal of uh, down the road of generating a billion dollars a year revenue. And that's our that's our goal. And this can this can make that happen. Well, I was reading in your news release that the uh, contrast media market size right now is six point seven seven billion. Is that correct? Yeah, it's for all contrast media of all type. And uh, the uh, iodine global markets, uh, it's roughly around five billion a year now. So it's uh, it's a very large market. Um, and there's major shortages going on right now. There's supply chain issues, uh, the geopolitical issues uh, going on in Europe and uh, potentially with China could have major effects. And really what we're focused on, these are, you know, you're, you're very uh, focused on strategic critical minerals. Well, these are strategic critical drugs that we are manufacturing and North America desperately needs uh, domestic supply chains to be created. Well, speaking of that, when I read your news release, I started researching brine. It says that brine can also be a source of valuable elements such as iodine, which we've been discussing, which is what you're targeting, but also lithium and brom bromine. Will you be able to do anything with any of these other critical minerals? Yeah, we. Uh, so with this technology, the next phase, uh, we're going to be uh, working on our uh, project in Utah. And we're going to be looking at uh, utilizing this technology, adapting it to extract lithium, magnesium, which are both uh, critical minerals, and uh, boron and brom bromide and all the all the different uh, minerals that were, are in the Paradox Basin, which is a much more complex brine uh, compared to the Anadarko. Uh, the reason we're focused on the Anadarko is it has uh, it's a, it's it's readily available. You don't have to go drill for the brine water. You can have it delivered to your doorstep. So that's why we're focused on the Andarco. Our Utah project will follow. And we believe that uh, we're going to be coming up with uh, some pretty interesting technology to uh, make that whole project economic. So if you wouldn't mind answering and explaining just a little bit better for our audience, how much of the iodine market, for instance, the Chinese do control? And also, if you can expand a little bit on why the North American market is actually responsible for almost, I think I read, 39% of the market. Is that correct? Uh, no, the, the majority of the uh, iodine produced comes out of Chile with two mines in Chile, one being SQM. It's a byproduct of their, uh, their mining operations. And... Uh, they're the biggest producer. The second largest producer is out of Japan, out of a natural gas field. And they're the two global uh, producers of iodine. Uh, the United States has uh, less iodine production and that I, all that iodine currently is being used for industrial purposes, not pharmaceutical. In pharmaceutical, you need to have a high purity and it has to be manufactured under GMP processing, which is uh, a lot of companies, it's, it's very uh, expensive to do that. But for Voyager, it uh, makes all the sense in the world because we are uh, vertically integrating the drug space. So in the long run, all our costs are significantly lower than anyone else in this business. Well, I obviously have to ask you the next question, which is how did you meet uh, Dr. Brian Mueller? Uh, we set up a team uh, almost uh, two years ago with... Uh, a hydrologist and the hydrologist introduced us to Brian and we were also introduced to Atelian and uh, effectively uh, we've decided to move forward with Brian's technology because we believe it's, uh, it's a, a very uh, efficient uh, extraction method. And timeline, timeline to getting this ready for market, how will that proceed? Well, we're looking at it from the sense that uh, we're going to uh, start our feasibility study on producing iodine flake. And from there, we will, uh, we will uh, sell to a multinational. Um, that timeline is probably a year before uh, CapEx financing on flake production. We're going to start with a 200 ton pilot plant and uh, then expand up to 1,000 tons a year. On the, uh, on the drug manufacturing side, uh, we're looking at uh, completing feasibility this year on that side of it as well and acquiring the financing by the end of this year to uh, advance on building a project in, 
in the Texas state of Texas. And we'll also be uh, uh, soliciting funds from the U.S. government who have outlaid uh, an enormous amount of funding for mineral extraction, pharmaceutical plant construction, and uh, anything related to critical minerals. So we're in a very good spot with the U.S. government in, in far as advancing with funding. And uh, so we're looking at, uh, you know, production realistically uh, within the next two years. Can you explain to us a little bit better where you said in the news release that this new process will allow the company to bypass traditional iodine flake production entirely and instead produce drug grade iodine directly to the, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, can you explain that a little bit better? So with Thanks. this process, it extracts the iodine from, from the water and you get a water and iodine, pure iodine in water. And, uh, and then that would go towards the flake process, which would remove the iodine and create the flake, which is uh, has a cost component to that. Uh, for our iodine drug business, we don't need to make the flake. So we can just take that iodine and water and go directly into start manufacturing our, our drugs, which is a complex process of multiple stages. And uh, the multinationals currently import several other iodine um, uh, compounds to make those drugs. We can make all those compounds, make everything on site. We don't have to import anything uh, from an iodine perspective to manufacture our, our iodine contrast drugs. So the whole streamline system is about a closed loop system where we, we go from you know, our, our, our motto is from the earth to the bottle. We're effectively going from the, the wellhead to the bottle, uh, manufacturing drugs in Texas. Uh, do you want to touch on the patents and how that patent timeline is actually in play right now? Because I noticed you filed your provisional patents and you have to uh, file full utility patents in 2026. Can you tell us a little bit more about what that means? Yeah, we're on our fourth provisional patent and uh, we may move forward with a, a fifth. And uh, the goal is just to file a, uh, a utility patent uh, by the end of the year. And for those of us following your barium, can you give us an update on what's happening with Voyager? Sure, we're, we're advancing with uh, our feasibility. We're, we're getting more sales, uh, which is our, our current uh, um, stage in development is that we have a third party manufacturer. We're importing uh, barium from China to manufacture our contrast media and uh, using those economics for a feasibility study. So. We're advancing towards having uh, the pre-feasibility on the Francis Creek project completed by uh, summer of uh, next year. And uh, after geotechnical drilling is done on the quarry site, uh, we'll have uh, final feasibility. And uh, we expect to be raising our CapEx by uh, the end of next year and uh, moving that project into production for 2020 by the end of 2027. Well, congratulations on your new world-class addition to your team. And for those of you interested in finding out more about Voyager Pharmaceuticals, please go to the following website. Thank you, Brent. Thank you.